Hello! Welcome back to a new Book Thoughts. Uh, this one's a little different because I'm actually doing three books all together. The first three books of the Magic by the Numbers series by Lyndon Hardy. Uh, the reason I'm doing the first three is he wrote the first three in the 80s, and then he wrote three more in the past couple years. So I thought that was a nice little chunk to do it as. Uh, the first three books are Masters of the Five Mag Master of the Five Magics, Secret of the Sixth Magic, Riddle of the Seven Realms, uh, and those are the first three. And I think they were published eighty to eighty eight. Um, it also isn't very nice for doing these reviews uh, individually, but together, because they all share the same world. They all share a lot of characteristics, especially the good stuff. Um, the books got better as they went along, writing-wise. And so I thought it just all nicely went together. Um, but they're different characters each time. The other characters still exist, but different. You know, you're following different people. So, first book is Master of the Five Magics. First thing to know is that this kind of laid the foundation for modern hard fantasy. If you're not familiar with the notion of hard fantasy, it's kind of like hard sci-fi, except for fantasy. The magic has a very strict set of rules. Everything is built on those rules, and those rules are inviolable. You don't necessarily know the true rules, but the author has a set of inviolable rules. It's kind of, you know, any sufficiently advanced magic is indistinguishable from science, the inverse of Clark's third law. That's that's what hard fantasy is, and that's what this is. It's just really laid it down. Um, for example, in this book, there are five magics, obviously, and there are seven laws that rule these five magics, that govern them. And you are given those seven laws before you get right next to the map, before you get to the first page of the story. It's laid out you can understand them. You might not understand how they necessarily play in motion, but nothing's hidden from you. Uh, so, you know, why why you're reading it then, since this is a series that is so influential on the magic, it's because you're given those hard rules, but you don't necessarily understand the interplay. Uh, the author has put a lot of time in in finding the interplay of these rules and you end up with some very surprising results. In the end, it becomes like a series of logic puzzles, trying to see how A can interact with B, and you get to C, and it's it's a lot of fun. Uh, this book is fantastic at it, because you go through each magic in turn, so you know, and each time, it's just a new set of puzzles, and then a new set of puzzles, and then it all satisfyingly wraps up together in the end. So... The bad things about this first book. I'm going to say they're not really bad, they're just not as interesting. The setting is just very bog standard, Tolkien esque fantasy, but, my, well, medieval fantasy. There's no. There, there's, there's humans, and that's it. There's demons too. You know, they get talked about. Um, but there's no, you know, elves or dwarves or anything like that. Excuse me. The prose is fine, but it occasionally borders on bland, um, which doesn't detract from the coolness of the book, but it, it certainly doesn't elevate anything. Uh, so the magic riddles are super satisfying, but the plot connecting everything so we can get between the riddles is very obvious. Um, the characters are all kind of stereotypes. The situation is outlined in a way that you can very clearly see how we get from A to B to C and so on. Um, not a bad plot, but it's not why you're here. So now the MC, the main character, he's a genius at these riddles, right? It takes him a little while, but he sees things that other people haven't seen, you know, and, and who knows how many hundreds of years. So he's a genius that way. He's also an idiot because the plot requires it. Um, there were a couple points where 
he could have had his happily ever after basically as you know as it was but the plot demanded that he didn't and so for contrived personal reasons he he wasn't and so you know it's kind of an idiot that way um because of that you know because the plot dictated the character actions as opposed to character actions building the plot occasionally he comes off as like randomly suddenly shallow and kind of a dick but the uh, but for the most part he was fairly likable and actually his puzzle solving was very fun to go through with him so that's what i would say about the first book the second book is secret of the sixth magic now all the good things i just mentioned carry straight on through the magic system is actually the same um the way puzzles are you know set up is is fantastic and all of that but now here's a very very good point about this series he did uh lyndon hardy could have added a sixth magic i mean it sounds like it secret of the sixth magic that's not exactly what's going on here um so we have those seven rules and really the best way to frame it in your mind is an exploration of why those seven rules you know where why is it seven rules where did the seven rules come from why are the rules those ones um, and it sets up a very nice convoluted puzzle uh, that I think has a very satisfying conclusion. In addition, this book does some things better than the previous one. Number one, the prose doesn't really get into any of those bland stretches, which is fantastic. Number two, the plot separate of those puzzles is actually pretty good. There's some, you know, points where it has highs and lows, but it's no longer an obvious plot. The plot itself is something worth reading. Um, number three, the world building is actually good. So we go across the sea from where the first book was to lands that weren't defined by the first book. And here we actually see places that uh, we see a world that is defined or was built along with the magic that is ubiquitous to this world. Um, sorcerers aren't just like a stereotype, you know, court sorcerer thing. It's, no, what would happen in this universe if sorcery worked like this? Well, they would get together, they would do this, that, or the other, you know, thaumaturgy. If we could use thaumaturgy like this, what would end, what would be the natural result? Well, you know, it'd be applied these ways. So much better on that end. Um, so all of the characters also in this book are much more interesting except for two. And unfortunately, the two are the main character and his love interest, or his main love interest. Um, the main character, once again, and, and the love interest are sacrificed on the altar of plot necessity. Um, the result is that he's just kind of whiny. Um he yeah he just he just whines a lot a lot and I, I can't take whining um and then the love interest was cold and distant to the point of off-putting um they and then they both magically fixed that bit of themselves in the end kind of like suddenly uh because you know recognize the author recognized that those were not great traits, but it wasn't as much character building as it was character sudden realignment. Um, I shouldn't say it, it wasn't on that big of a scale, but definitely noticeable. Definitely something that, to me, detracted from it. Now we get to Riddle of the Seven Realms. This book has all of the good things of those previous books. We have the great setting. Actually, this one has more settings um, because seven realms and they're all very interesting this book has the interesting magics um, and in this case rather than adding another layer it asks a important question about what magic we already have uh, we've already gone through specifically one of the rules of wizardry is that demons can come from the demon plane the demon realm to your realm through fire and 
fundamentally, at the question, the central question is, what happens if you light a fire in the demon realm? Well, fire hasn't been lit in the demon realm ever, true fire at least, and so that that's what spawns off this whole plot, you know, with a lot of intrigue and whatnot with it. Um, the prose is good. Like I said, the world building is good. The plot is actually really stands well on its own. Um, the a the actions flow more smoothly as the consequence of the previous ones in a more satisfying way. Uh, we don't have characters making choices based on the necessities of plot. The characters really do get to act like characters. Um, the only one of the characters has some oddities in his uh, early part of the book that were kind of a little questionable in, in terms of the writing. But the four main core characters actually had plot arcs. Two of them were point of view characters, but they, they you end up with a group of four. But they actually had plot arcs, they had character development, we now have good world building, we have good story, we have the hard, the hard fantasy, um, there's a conspiracy going on, it also calls back to knowledge from your previous books. You don't need to have read the previous books in any of these cases, but I do believe that it would give you a much deeper understanding uh, because the riddles do assume that you're used to that you've worked through level one and level two riddles you know um you don't need the answers or anything like that but i think the experience of working through them is more satisfying in that case and uh yeah that's what i have to say about those three books definitely recommend them especially if you're interested in hard fantasy and uh that's all I have for this. I don't know what I'm going to do the next book thought on. I only do these whenever I have a reason. Um, a book that I, I read a lot, but I have to have a book that I think I have something that I want to say about it. Not even interesting. That I just want to tell someone, and that someone is you, my imaginary viewers. Um, yeah. So, uh, you know, I can... I can say like and subscribe but that's pointless what i actually want is what do you think would make these videos better i have definitely gotten more organized i've gotten better production uh, but still always room for improvement so if you would let me know if you've watched this whole thing if you would let me know what i could do better i would really appreciate it and other than that i am going to say so long